Hello! Today I want to have a closer look at the meaning of the generator rotor angle theta. We talk about the three-phase synchronous generator which is connected to a large power system, a so-called infinite bus. According to this formula, the real power, it may also be called active power, which a generator feeds to the grid is proportional to the rotor angle theta. At the moment the rotor angle theta is zero, so the real power is also zero. Now let's increase this uh, rotor angle and you can now see how the real power fed to the grid is increasing. The rotor angle is the angle between these two arrows. The red arrow is the axis of the DC coil in the rotor and this corresponds to the magnetic field which is generated by this uh, rotating coil. So this is the red arrow you can see here and the blue arrow is the rotating magnetic field which is rotating through the three coils of the stator. As long as the generator is disconnected from the grid the rotating magnetic field through the stator is only induced by the DC magnetic field from the rotor. This means that there is no angle between the rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotating magnetic field from the rotor. So the angle theta is equal to zero. So let's rotate this rotor. The rotation speed is for 50 hertz and you see that the two arrows are sitting on each other. At the very moment, however, when we close the breaker and the connection is established now between the generator and the grid, there is immediately a current flowing from the generator to the grid. This current flows through the inner inductance of the generator. At the moment, this is this value X, and you see that there is immediately an angle between the rotating field through the three phase coils of the stator and the rotating field of the rotor. Let's again watch the closing instant. The breaker is now open, and now let's continue with the rotation. And you see at that very moment, you see how the, the angle between these two arrows appears to be larger than only zero. The same angle also appears between the inner induced voltage of the generator and the voltage you can measure at the terminal of the generator. The angle at the closing instant, however, happens only if the two sources, namely the generator and the grid, are not exactly synchronized at the closing instant of the breaker. If we do not hit the optimal synchronization point when we close the breaker, there will be an initial oscillation of the rotor angle until perfect synchronization. So let's now visit this graph here. What you can see here is this sinus curve for the electric power. This is this formula here. And here on the x-axis you see the angle theta. So the blue curve is the electric power supplied to the grid and the red curve this straight line here stands for the mechanical torque or the mechanical power which is fed to the generator by the motor coupled to the generator. Let's increase now the torque by increasing the motor power and you see now that the mechanical power is increasing. So this blue dot here stands for the electrical power and the red line stands for the mechanical power and you see that the electric power is just following the mechanical power. So we continue to increase now this torque and you see how the electric power is now following the mechanical and also here again we have a very slight oscillation around the mechanical torque. So there must also always be an equilibrium between the electrical power supplied to the grid and the mechanical power and you can see here on the x-axis this is now this angle, this rotor angle and the same rotor angle appears here and the same rotor angle appears between the inner induced voltage inside the generator and the terminal voltage of the generator. And this at the end of the day results into a power flowing from the generator, real power flowing from the generator to the grid. 
This very same formula applies also if we expand a little bit our network. So it's instead of looking at the generator synchronous impedance only as we did just before, we can also add the impedance of a line. So this X here would be the sum of these two impedances here. The only difference compared to before would then be that the angle theta would not be anymore only the rotor angle, but it would be the angle between the inner induced voltage of the generator and the voltage at the other side, the phasor voltage at the other end of the line. But the formula still applies. The only difference is this term here would be larger and also theta would be increased, so that would compensate each other. Maybe this picture helps to better understand the role of this theta. I want to quickly reverse now this process of synchronizing the generator to the grid, then closing the breaker and then slowly starting to push real power into the network. So here we are in the process of synchronizing. Then we close the breaker. Then there is this oscillation and then slowly we start to increase the mechanical power. So the torque increases and by doing so we increase the theta and by doing so we increase the real power fed from the generator to the grid. From now on I stop this uh, rotation and uh, of the generator because it's just disturbing. Uh, I just want to show from now on a uh, generator standing still. Of course it continues to rotate but I do not sim simulate it anymore. The only thing I, I watch from now on is this uh, rotor angle. Here I have now one of the major challenges, a uh, short circuit on a line. Let's see what happens now. So I assume that my generator is now running and is delivering power to the grid. And uh, then I have a short circuit on a line. I disconnect the line for 300 milliseconds and then you see how this generator oscillates. And the oscillation should be so that uh, this point never exceeds this other equilibrium state of the machine because otherwise we will lose control of the generator. I will show you how this works. What I do now in the second run is I just leave the breakers open a little bit longer. Instead of 300 milliseconds, it's maybe 450 milliseconds. And then this point will exceed the second equilibrium point here and the generator will uh, accelerate uncontrolled. Let's look at this one now. So what has really happened in this video? We have here uh, the generation point. So this is now this uh, theta, this uh, rotor angle, which is, uh, let's say, at 30, 30 degrees delivers power from the generator to the grid, real power. So we have now a balanced situation between the mechanical torque uh, to the generator and the electrical power, which is leaving the generator. So these two are in balance. And now suddenly I will have a short circuit uh, on the line. You see, that would be now a typical short circuit. You have a lightning on the line and then immediately there is a short circuit and the relays notice that there is a short circuit and they will open the line in order to disconnect uh, this short circuit. You see the breakers on both ends of the line would open now. And at that very moment, there is no electrical power anymore uh, the generate, which can leave the generator. So there is only a torque applied to the generator, but no power supply anymore. Therefore, the power, instead of leaving the generator, it goes into acceleration of the rotor. So immediately the rotor starts to accelerate. And this is what you see here. If the motor accelerates, then also this theta, of course, increases very rapidly. And you see now this uh, theta increases until the breakers reclose. So now the breakers have reclosed and hopefully this arc, which was uh, produced by the lightning, has now been extinguished within these uh, 400 milliseconds. So the generator can now deliver power again and will be slowed down again to these 50 hertz. 
of course with an oscillation but since the brake the rotor is still uh, accelerated and is still faster than this uh, 50 hertz rotating magnetic field the this uh, rotor angle will continue to increase and there is now a race between the power delivered to the grid and the slowing down of, of the acceleration of the rotor if this can happen it depends on if this can happen before this cross point here if yes the generator will return to synchronous mode if not we will lose control of the speed of the generator you see and in this case unfortunately we will lose control and now the generator just accelerates that means that now we would have to close the walls of the generator slow down the motor stop the generator from from rotating or at least break it down massively take away the torque and resynchronize the generator with the grid before we can reclose it and then start to put uh, mechanical power again and deliver power to the grid so i have here another example i have a generator delivering power to the grid by means of two lines in parallel still the formula applies as we have seen before and uh, due to the lightning i will lose now one of the lines disconnect the line and now the generator has to supply power by only one line what does it mean now the power which can be delivered by the same generator uh, is less than before because i have only one line that means that this x now is not anymore the sum of these two parallel lines but only one line so it has nearly doubled so the total electrical power which can be delivered is close to 50 percent of before a little bit more and therefore this curve has jumped from here to here and the question is now can a new equilibrium be achieved or does the generator again exceed this no return point here let's see we have seen this works now in reality we have a little bit more space because the generator is damped so the oscillation is damped and uh, there is a criteria how we can calculate if the generator stays in sync or not so what is now the stability criteria roughly uh, the surface of the deceleration phase here above the mechanical uh, torque line should be larger than the acceleration surface here if this one is larger than this one then we can break down the speed of the generator and it can stay synchronous otherwise if this surface is smaller then the acceleration phase puts more energy into the rotation of the rotor than what can be taken out afterwards during the braking phase and then the generator loses control you can go to the simulator and you have now the case here you have you can build up such a network yourself you have now two generators uh, and you have a line in between with some damping of the line and you have now this one breaker so the first thing is we push now power by, by increasing the uh, the rotor angle you see i increase the rotor angle and by doing so i increase the power supplied to the grid the power is the red line here of course you also see this oscillation as before so i accept i increase now my rotor angle i damp it a little bit and now what i can do i can open and reclose the breaker very quickly and then you see the generator stays synchronous but if i open it for a little bit longer time i will lose synchronism you see so learning by doing and getting some practice you can go to www.ecsb.ch this is an online simulator there you can build on your own circuits and simulate and so hands-on learning is very efficient